Welcome to Time of the Healing Rooms. I'm Pastor Don Schemont. I'm the Director of Healing Rooms of Buffalo, Niagara, and we are just delighted that you invite us into your home today. We have an extremely special program for you today, and I pray you just sit down, relax, don't touch that dial, because the Lord Jesus Christ has got something very special to minister to you in your heart today. And we're excited to present what's, what's about to take place today, because it is really something special. And in order for me to set the stage for that to happen, I'd like to share a scripture that the Lord gave me, put on my heart this morning as I was in prayer. So let me share it. It comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and it's actually verses 9, 10, and 11, and says, Don't you know that those doing such things have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who live immoral lives, who are idol worshippers, adulterers, homosexuals, will have no share in his kingdom. Neither will thieves or greedy people, drunkards, slanderers, or robbers. There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins are washed away, and you are set free, apart for God, and He has accepted you because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God has done for you. You know, that's, that's an incredible message because there are an awful lot of people that are probably watching me that are hooked on a lot of those particular type of things in their life. And, and you think that you're trapped into that situation the rest of your life. Well, I have good news for you. Jesus Christ died for you 2,000 years ago, settled the issue, and he's given you a way out. Some, I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people in these situations and say, I, I just can't escape this. I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I, there's no way I can get free. There's a lie from the pit of hell. I am telling you right now, I know for a fact that Jesus Christ has set you free. And it's a matter of saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for the sins that I've committed. Help me to walk a life that is righteous before you. And regardless of whatever it is that you are really tied up in, it doesn't matter. The whole list of things that I've read, they're all totally escapable only through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that it is possible. Uh, our guest today is, has experienced some of this, and he's going to share an incredible testimony about the way his life was and the way it is now. And it is going to give you hope, and it's going to give you fresh insight as to how you can make changes in your own life. But let me tell you, we are from the Healing Rooms of Buffalo, Niagara, and we're lo located at 314 West Ferry. We are open on Tuesday mornings from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m., and Thursday evenings are open from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. You can come during those hours anytime. There's no charge. There's no appointment. You just come in just the way you are. You come in, you sit down, you fill out a, you know, a simple slip of paper. There's music playing. There's fresh coffee and cookies for you just to sit down and relax. And what happens is we have um, a teams of people that come and escort you into a prayer room, and they pray with you. And they will stand in the gap with you to see you through these situations that you're in. And the very fact that they're willing to do that, God honors their faith, and we see changes in people's lives. We're also located in the Summit Mall in Wheatfield, New York, where we're open on 7 p.m. through 9 p.m., except for the third Monday of the month where we're closed. But if you're watching this program from Rochester, I have special news for you. We have a healing room also in Rochester, and it's located at 361 North Washington Street, and Bill and Betty Omar are the directors of that healing room, and you can reach them at 585 Six four one zero five seven zero, and you can give them a call and find out exactly when they're open, and you can go there and receive the same type of ministry. It's no different. We're all together in this. We're going to give you a special offer also. We have produced our very first newsletter. It's yours free for the asking. If you were to call 884-0048 and just request a newsletter, leave your name and your address so we can properly address it, and we'd be glad to mail you a newsletter at no charge, at no charge at all. It's absolutely free. So if you are really pondering what to do and you really want to get out of the situation that you're in right now, then we encourage you to come to the healing rooms and be blessed by those who stand in the gap. Well, it comes to kind of my favorite time of the program. We get a chance to introduce our guest. 
And I've known him for several years. I've heard a testimony. It's absolutely awesome. And it's something that's really going to blow you away. So I'd like you uh, with me to welcome our guest. This is Pastor Terry King. He is from Saving Grace Ministries. Pastor Terry, it's so good to have you on the show today. I am grateful to be here, Brother Don, and, and uh, thank you very much for having us and for allowing Saving Grace and myself to share mm -hmm. uh, the good news yeah. and what's taking place here in western New York. A lot of good things happening. Aren't oh, there? it's incredible. It's incredible. You know, I've heard your testimony. I've, I've heard it like more than once. I've heard it a couple times. Mm -hmm. Give us kind of a, a, a capsule snapshot of some of the things you went through before you got where you are today. Well, Pastor uh, Don, um, I was that man that is, is written about in uh, 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived a life that was all about me. That was about money, power, prestige. It was about seeking the American dream. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was born into a second-generation immigrant family, a father who worked in, in a mill, mm -hmm. uh, who provided for his family but struggled with alcoholism and, and anger issues. Yeah. I grew up wanting nothing more in my life than to not be my father. Yeah, yeah. I had determined at a young age that money was going to be the root of all of my success, peace and joy. Mm -hmm. and, and I attended church, mm -hmm. Christmas and Easter. Yeah, okay. and, and I often look back and think to myself that my belief as a Christian then was that I was honoring God by attending His church at Christmas and Easter and that I deserved the blessings of God all year long while I was sinful man. Wow. Wow. And uh, I was sadly mistaken because as I became an alcoholic, and I chose to live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I chose to ignore people that prayed for me and asked me to accept Jesus into my life. And, and for a series of years, my life just continued to unravel. And the more that I tried to accumulate in wealth, mm -hmm. thinking that that would overcome my, my mental anguish and yes. pain, mm -hmm. um, the Lord took me to a place. And, and I believe it was a place that said, enough is enough. And through that process, uh, Don, I, I drove drunk one evening. Uh -huh. Now, you know, in life, we all have warning and marker points. Yeah, we do. And uh, others would say, do you think you drink too much? M numerous divorces, uh, bankruptcy, lost jobs, business failures. Those weren't enough in my mind. Yeah. It, it took a choice for me to drink and drive one night that I struck and I killed an innocent child of God. Wow. Wow. And uh, while I struggled with the reconciliation of what that burden was that I was carrying, mm -hmm. I still believed in my life that somehow I could resurrect this sinful man and serve humanity. Yeah. And the Lord was still saying to me, no, <laughs> you need to allow me into your life, yeah. not just acknowledge me, not just receive me, but I have the power to set you on a new path. Yes, yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I, I look at maybe people in our audience today mm -hmm. who have loved ones who are struggling with addiction or behavior or gambling or, or whatever it is that this, the social ill of the time is. Yeah, yeah. But the Lord is put on the shelf. Yeah. Uh, I'm one that I allowed Jesus to be on the shelf in my life, and it took me to go to prison um, and to be removed from society. Today, I'm a grateful man. Yeah. Going to prison was one of the greatest gifts our Lord Jesus Whoa. gave me. Uh, I went for four years, and it was in the New York State prison system that I was attempting to resurrect my old life, mm -hmm. that the Lord allowed a, a gentleman by the name of George to come with an old King James Bible. <laughs> he was serving a 50-year-to-life sentence. Whoa. And he had no opportunity to get out of prison, but he had the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he had what I had sought my whole life to acquire. Mm -hmm. He had friends, and, and, and he had an, a, a, just a, a light about him and yeah. his personality that people gravitated to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a bounce in his step. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept going to George because he worked in the law library. And I thought, this man can help me overturn my case. And I'm the victim. I'm illegally sentenced. The state gave me too much time. And... And uh, George said to me one night, you know, Terry, he said, you're exactly where the Lord wants you to be. Yeah.